All right, you are listening to the best show on WFMU. Uh, this is our first annual XFL Super Spectacular, and this should be the governor of Alabama, Governor Buddy Swales, on the line. Let's uh, check this. WFMU, you're on the air. Hello, am I on? Yes, is this, go- is this the governor? Sandra, I have it. Yeah, I have it. Hello? 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 Yes, is this the governor? Yes, it is. It's Buddy Swales. Well, uh, Governor, uh, first How of all, you, sir? I'm doing great. This is, uh, I want to say to him. I'm glad. Uh, thank you, Sandra. I just, uh, I've been on hold for about five minutes here, Tom. Yes. Well, thank you for calling, Governor. And, uh, it is Tom, isn't it? Yes, Tom. Well, all right. Okay, and uh, this is the governor of Alabama, uh, Buddy Swales, who I guess Alabama is is one of the the uh, states. Now tell me, tell me here, Tom, what, what we're debating, so I can uh, add my point of view. Well, we're not de- we're not necessarily debating and anything. I can, uh, I can pass on my what I have in my head. I hope that will be helpful to you. We're not really debating anything per se. I just were. Well, let me let me let me state right away here that my 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 point of view is not the point of view of everybody in America. But okay, uh, I am the governor, and uh, I do assume that my point of view does mean something. Absolutely, a point of view is very, you know, uh, valuable. I'm and I glad just... to have the opportunity to speak on the air. Where are you at, Tom? Uh, I'm in uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. Jersey City. That's what I have right down here. Mm-hmm. That's well, right. Uh huh. That's well, in New Jersey. Yes. It's a lovely state. Oh, thank you very much. And Alabama is is beautiful, from what I've heard as well. Well, we're pretty happy with it. <laughs> we're pretty happy with it so far, Tom. Uh huh. And are you happy with the? Uh... The Birmingham Bolts, you must be very I got, happy. I got to tell you right off the bat, Tom, we are extremely excited about the Birmingham Bolts. Birmingham Bolts are, are one of the premier teams in the XFL, the Extreme Football League. And uh, we are just, well, we're, we're plumb pleased with what's going on right now with the XFL. And certainly the Bolts, they are, they're, they're doing fantastic. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are certainly adding, they're, they're just adding a whole new element to Alabama. The great state of Alabama, and we are we are we are just absolutely pleased with the results. Okay, and and what what uh what what's been the mood down there amongst the fans? Well, look, we're, 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 there, there's there's some serious issues we have to discuss here with the XFL, Tom. And, and you know, I don't want to get off on a political rant, but that's not what I'm about. Okay. Even though I am a politician, I consider myself one of the people. And, I, and, and, and as governor, I, I feel that's necessary. I mean, I, I'm not here. I'm not here to steamroll people. And I'm not here to, to to force people into into certain views. But 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 I am here to pass on what I believe is what's important. And 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 what the XFL has done for not only the, the city of Birmingham, but the state of Alabama is incredible, incredible, Tom. Mm-hmm. And and we are. We, uh, we are experiencing w- w- with the XFL when it, when, since it since its inception and since it's been in Birmingham, we have experienced uh, an awakening, and, and and it's been truly exciting to see fans come out, to see the people of Birmingham and the people of Alabama have a team, which we were prevented from having since the beginning of the NFL. Okay. So right now we have a we have a whole new opportunity. In a whole new horizons, and we're just do we feel that this this is great for for like I said for the state and for the people and for civic pride mm-hmm. and for Alabama pride. Okay. And so right now, like I said, we we're just very excited, very excited. Mm-hmm. So how how uh, how has the attendance been for the for the. Uh... For the Bolts games. Well, we're doing. We're, 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 look, now I was responsible for the building of Legion Field in downtown Birmingham. Now, we, we did not have a, a major stadium in Birmingham, Alabama, except for the college stadiums. We built a new field, the Legion Field. Okay. Which seats 120,000 people. For the for for the Bolts. Specifically for the Bolts. I mean, that's a that's a pretty. Uh... That's a pretty bold, bold. Uh... Well, we're bold, Tom. We're bold. We're making bold moves. The XFL is bold. And we're bold. And I, I was brought on board, and I am on board. Mm-hmm. And now we have a field that seats 120, like I said, 120, 122,000 people. And now we have earmarked 6,500 seats for every game for the XFL. And we have filled those seats to capacity 
for all our home games. So and you're... we have sold out the rest of the season. So you're you're actually selling sixty five hundred seats. Sixty five hundred seats in a in a hundred twenty two thousand seater. That's correct. That's what that's what we've earmarked. But why? I mean, has is that uh, is that a number you came up with, or is that the amount of people well, this who are coming out to buy between with the between Legion Field, the organizers of the uh, of the XFL, Vince McMahon himself, the president of the XFL, and me as governor. Uh huh. And now we're working together. We came up with 6,500 as the best possible number of seats to fill for our stadium, for the appropriate intimacy that will provide the people of Alabama to see a football game. Uh huh. Now, 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 mind you, the people of Alabama, Tom, had not had the opportunity to see a professional football game up until the XFL came. And yeah, okay. right now. We're just we're, we're just we're just happy. And you have the the team there. So you came up with that number, sixty five hundred. And how how have you been filling that sixty five hundred? Well, we have, like I said, filled the first. We've, uh, all our home games up until now have been filled. Uh huh. And we have an eighty five to a hundred percent commitment for tickets for all the rest of the home games this year. And we've already worked into the future, from what I've spoke to, for the people, for the people, or for the organizers, that we are going to fill next year. Okay. Now that's sixty-five hundred people, Tom. I mean, that's that's a, a lot of people for a startup, experimental football league. Yes, but, it is, sir. But it's it's not that much compared to other. Well, now, like sports. I said, we are not giving out any other seats. Certainly, there's plenty more plenty more seats mm-hmm. in our stadium. Now at some well, we've earmarked the 6,500 for the sake of the league and for the intimacy of the game. Now, this is a different game than the NFL. And here, here's my big problem. Okay. What, what I don't like is this smear campaign that's going on with, with, with the media calling the XFL a ruse and calling it a fraudulent league. Now, have you seen XFL games, Tom? I, I, I have, have seen. I've, I've seen plenty I've seen every, of. Them. I've seen every home game in Birmingham. Uh huh. And I will tell you something, it is the best football I have seen since I have been alive, and I have seen a lot of football. Uh huh. So I have seen Alabama football, and I have seen the National Football League. Okay, and this is and to I'm you. a huge fan of football myself. And the XFL, what they're saying about the XFL is just not true. Mm-hmm. This football is real football. This football is not fake football. And the liberal media is trying to pull the wool over our eyes, Tom, by telling us that the XFL is no good. But whose media? Now, they crap can this thing. They crap can this league before, before it even went off the ground. And personally, I take offense to that. Who did this? I'm talking about the media, Tom. Which, where, like, and I'm talking about this Clintonian arrogance that runs through this country. Uh huh. I mean, can you get more specific on? Now, to me, Tom, it's a money game. Well, and... I guess all sports are going to be a money game. Well, not the XFL exactly. Uh huh. Now, granted, there's money involved. Okay. People pay for their seats, but people want to see football. Now, why do people prevent people from seeing football in Alabama? I don't know. I was trying to get a professional football team to Alabama before the XFL came along. Okay, and you, you were well, that met. did not happen, Tom. Now, mm-hmm. now, now, I'm not putting a finger and pointing a finger at America and saying you were wrong. But what I, who I am pointing the finger at, is the people who the establishment who makes these, who makes these decisions. Okay, and who's making those decisions? Well, as I would far say that can... it is a combination of a lot of factors, Tom. I would say that there there are many people involved. Certainly, uh, many politicians are involved. Many people in Washington are involved. And there's a lot of people who uh, who have controlling interest in the money in this country who are involved. Controlling interest in what money? Like sports money? No, the money, Tom. The money. All the money. The money that's filtered around. Do the people get all the money? No. Does the NFL get all the money? Yes, it does. Why does the NFL get all the money? Why? I, I don't know. 
Why? Well, I mean, it's why, a it's a business. Why is the media running this smear campaign against the XFL? Mm-hmm. I mean, is it really a smear? Well, in my eyes, the XFL is is just plain and simple good football. Good football for people in Alabama. Good football for people in Orlando. Good football for people who've been deprived of professional football in their home states because the big city markets got their teams, their uh-huh. well-established teams. You okay. see what I'm saying, Tom? Well, uh, let me just say, first of all... Do you see what I'm saying, though? I guess I do. I'm still not clear on something. I just want to say that my guest is, uh, and we are pleased to have Governor of Alabama, Buddy Swales, on Buddy the program. Swales. You call me Buddy. Okay. Well, thank you, Buddy. Or governor? I mean, it's you don't have to call me governor. I, you know what? What's here's that? the thing with me, Tom. I'm a regular guy. Okay. And the XFL is a regular league. Now, granted, a lot of people say extreme. I don't think extreme. I think regular. It's just plain good, honest football, with with I think some of the best talent we can find in football. You think the XFL has some of the best talent? I think it has superior talent to the NFL, Tom. See, now a lot of people would would seriously disagree with that. Have you that. watched the game? I've watched plenty of the games. You yes. have watched all the games? Yes. And what is your assessment? I think the football is definitely subpar well, compared that, to the NFL. I think you are being skewed by what the media is trying to tell you about the league. Mm-hmm. Now, where do you get your information from, Tom? What do you mean, my evaluation of the of the XFL? Yeah, where'd you get your information? From you read, you read about it, right? No, I watched. Well, you the games. watch it, but you watch it with the rose colored glasses on because you've already read the articles about it. No, well, no, I mean, I I watched it. I mean, that information has to come from somewhere, Tom. And I, it wasn't pulled out of the air. Well, I saw it with my own eyes. Your your, your brain doesn't exist in a vacuum, does it? Absolutely, it absolutely does not exist in a vacuum, but. I watched the games and then now, why, why, filtered, why, why, why filtered chance, that through. Chance, I mean, has the media overloaded this country with all these negative and painted the XFL as some evil demon that's come along to destroy us? Well, it isn't. But that's the media. That's the media's claim. That's the perception that they give. And then everybody buys into it. No, what? Okay, what do and you I'm think? And I'm not saying you're in cahoots with the media, Tom, but you you do have a radio show. Yes. And you are part of the media, I suppose. You are you are you are dispelling information to the public. Well, I like to let my guests do the dispelling of information. Well, that's what I'm here for, Tom. Now, what what are you? I mean, if you have, I'm happy to have this debate. This re- I, I wasn't to tell you the I'm truth, sure Governor. I, 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 I welcome it. Well, Governor, I really was not even and looking I, to now, have... look, I think that the XFL is not the most important issue in the country. Well, I uh, guess... That, uh, that, is, that is a certain fact. I don't think anybody But I do think it is a representative that. of a problem that exists in this country, which is that the liberal establishment, the media, singularly the media, has brought on this smear campaign. Now, why, I ask, why, or why... Why have they done this? Now, why? Because regular people are trying to play football? That strikes me as odd, Tom. Why, why would you instantly call this a liberal smear campaign, though? Well, it, it, well, he, here's the thing, Tom. It's in the papers. It's all over the press. Uh, now, why, like, why, like I said, why is the XFL being crap canned? Why is it? Why? Well, that... that that's what I'm saying. The, the, the media has skewed the issue. All right? Now, they have panned the XFL because they are in the pockets of the establishment of the New York cities and the big city markets and the Chicago's and the L.A.'s. You know? Who is in those pockets? And I'll tell you something right now. The New York's and the L.A.'s and the Chicago's are the ones with the weakest records and the weakest teams. In the XFL, they because are, Because the strength actually. of America, Tom, uh-huh. lies with the so-called second market teams. But the media wants you to believe that the New York and Chicago is a representative of the country. Well, I'll tell you something, Tom. The masses have spoken, and you tell 3,000 to 6,500 fans in Birmingham that they're not Americans. Well, they are. Well, I don't think anybody is... is... And I'm here to tell you right now, Tom, 
this whole campaign is just that. It's just that. It is just that. Is what? People tell the media telling people that they're not well, Americans. It's a way, Tom, for the establishment to weave its web of deceit on the unsuspecting masses. I mean, you have to admit that's a pretty paranoid uh, uh, outlook for, for somebody who's a governor to have. Well, I don't think it's. No, you know what? Because what I'm trying to do is protect my people. And what I did was I helped with the cooperation of the XFL and Vince McMahon to bring. To bring the great state of Alabama professional football. And that's what I consider it. Now, the NFL has a vested interest in destroying this league. In destroying what? The XFL? The XFL. And why? Because why? I would love for the Birmingham Bolts and the Orlandos and the so called second market teams to get, to get booted out. Why? And to just get swept under the rug. But what I'm saying is the XFL could be the new football of this country. Because the best teams are in the second market. Like my, like the Birminghams. So you think that that's almost some sort of some sort of rebellious rebellious movement? The fact that these teams are winning and the big market teams are losing? I, I do believe it's a reflection of what's going on, Tom. How how is it that an actual football game, which is actually played, can represent something? I mean, the the New York team, the Hitmen, could easily be four and zero if they had, you know, a, a couple different players. Now, I don't agree with that one bit. But let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Have you ever read about one single scandal amongst any XL players? since the inception of the league? Um, no. No, no, I haven't. No is the answer. Now, in the past six months, have you heard of any scandals with the NFL players? Well, yeah, no, obviously there's... there's. It's constant. Now, I mean, there no, is no players in the XFL uh, that I know of are battling any legal troubles. That you know so, now, of. Now, what are we to believe from that? Well, what we are to believe, Tom, is that this is the single most upstanding league in competitive sports. You could also make a point that the XFL is underexposed, that they, these players are not under the same microscope. Well, why are the XFL, why are the XFL, XFL excuse me, why, why are those players underexposed? Because the media chooses to underexpose them. But why is that surprising to you? The NFL has been around. Now, the XFL has only the most respectable players, whose major concern is to play football. I mean, the NFL has been pretty established. And I'll tell you something else. It is established, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm making a connection between the NFL and the liberal establishment. I don't understand why liberal now, you don't have to buy, plays you, into this. Obviously, Tom, you've already bought into this. Into what? Well, into this whole theory about but, but that, 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 that the establishment ha that, that the establishment has created. Okay. Now, you've already bought into this theory, and I'm, I'm not here to convince you, Tom. What, I, what I'm here to do is to congratulate the XFL and, and to say to the XFL, thank you for bringing football to the masses. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess they have brought it to, to certain markets, and it, there is a certain amount of failure associated with the ratings, I mean, uh, the television ratings. Well, now, that is simply because, Tom, the media has made it a point to destroy this league. Now, that's not... That, no, now, why, why look, do you, you think... You can believe that this is a conspiracy, that I, what, what I'm saying is preposterous, but I'm just, telling, I'm just telling you the facts. And the facts remain is that since the beginning of the league, Tom... The XFL has been panned. Because of the play? Not because of the play, because of what has been written about the play. Now, I've seen the games, and I already told you this. My personal view is that the XFL games are better than NFL games. And but that's I'm not your... saying this because I have a team in my home state. You know, there... I'm saying this because I've seen the game. But somebody could make a case that you could be vaguely biased because... You're in a, a, a state that is not a 
mecca for pro well, sports, Tom, Tom, Alabama. Tom, 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 Tom. Now, here's the thing. I could tell you the same thing. Now, I could shoot that argument right back at you. I'd say that you are biased because you're from New York. You're from a community that has established, and you have a vested interest in the success of, of these other teams and your show. And I'm not saying you're perpetrating a fraud, but what I'm saying is you have a particular interest of your own. Which now, is... if you are against the XFL, that's fine. But I'm, I'm here to say that my contention is that you are against the XFL because certain predisposed, predisposed beliefs that you have based on the media and the portrayal of the XFL in the media. But what does the media stand to gain? Now, look, here's the thing, Tom. We're doing great things. I mean, you come down to see one of the Birmingham Bulls games, okay? Now, I went last week. And, and, and they are doing great things. I mean, and you can see the faces of the people in the crowd who are who are just absolutely loving every minute of this league. Now, why why is this country trying to take that away from these people who are just trying to enjoy a game? Now, I'm not here to say that that we, we that we should get rid of the NFL. No, let there be both. Well, I guess that that is how it's going to be, um, you know, for the time being. Well, not not if not uh, not if not if the Jewish media has anything to do with it, Tom. The the Jewish media. Well, I mean, oh, so I, now, now it's a it's a it's a it's an issue about. Uh, well, no, now, now look, Tom. Uh, Jewish what I, people. What? No, it's not an issue about Jewish people, but it is an issue about the liberal establishment. So all liberals and I are. I am making a connection. I am making a connection between what the liberal media and 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 Jews. Well, look, I just I just watched in my office the the address by President Bush. Uh huh. All right. Now he and I'll tell you something. I I I thought that was amazing what he did tonight. Uh, I missed the the. Uh his speech but well, i'll tell you something tom he's a regular guy like myself uh hopefully like yourself and i now, what, now what, what's your definition of regular though well he's just a regular guy i mean it's regular if by your definition mean non-jewish well my my, my sense of him tom is he well, he's not out to practice deceit i mean now, what, my, my, what my feeling is is that this media establishment that that's trying to pick apart the XFL right now is completely off base. And now what they're trying to do is deny people like me, who represents people from my home state, from enjoying, enjoying the XFL, a regular game of football. Now, hopefully... How, though? How? You're, you're still entitled to go and buy a ticket and watch the game and... and... Well, you see what's happening with the XFL, Tom. I mean, I think here. personally, you want my personal take on it? Mm -hmm. I think the, the 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 league was overhyped for and the the hype did not match the the quality of the play. Well, now that was expectations that were set by the media. These are standards that were set by the media. See, I I don't I disagree 100%. Now, if people have a bone to pick with the XFL, they should watch the games. They should go to the stadium in some of the places like Birmingham and see the people enjoy the game. Now you you know that a case could be made that you're being that you're incredibly biased about your uh, your stance toward the XFL because you built a stadium. Well, here's the thing, Tom. To to do a we comedy. Are one of the best teams in the league right now. How much did the stadium cost? We are we are well I I am not I, I cannot give out the figures for the stadium. Oh, just but they are on record. And I don't have those in front of me is right it, now. Is it public funds? There was uh, there was a portion of public funds that went into the building of it, but that was approved by the people. It's a referendum, Tom. Well, that's that's all well and good, but you also are accountable. If this league goes belly up, then you're the one stuck with an empty stadium. Look, when I see an XFL game, I see football the way it should be played, with regular guys who are there to play football before they're there to make money. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't see that with the NFL. 
That could be because you don't have an NFL now, team. I see that it's that. a money game. Well, I can't have an NFL team, Tom. And that's, what I, that's why I'm asking why. Right now, I have an XFL team. So if you could have an NFL team, would you abandon the XFL? Well, no, Tom, that's a question I can't answer. That, that, that is, that, that, that's a complicated question. Right now, I have an XFL team, and let that team flourish, which it has been doing. Okay. Well, I should say that my guest is the governor of Alabama, um, Governor Buddy Swales, and we're talking about the XFL and the, the Birmingham Bolts as part of our uh, first annual XFL Super Spectacular. Now, i got to tell you, Tom, uh-huh. the pre-show at, at, at Legion Stadium, at Legion Field, uh-huh. is one of, the, one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen in my life. Now, this is an event that I, I think, uh, next to the Bicentennial, it's been one of the most exciting experiences that I've ever seen. What is what is a pre uh, pre show? Now, like? are we to deprive the good people of Alabama, who I represent, the, the ability to see this? Because because everybody is speaking out against the S XFL and trying to tear it apart. Now, look, we do an amazing thing before the show, before the game, where we recreate Sherman's march. You know General Sherman? Yes. General William Sherman? Uh-huh. Now, we recreate Sherman's March. Okay. And, and, but the South wins in the end. In what? In your? In our version of it. For your? Well, we do a whole reenactment scene, but the South wins. But that's not historically accurate. Well, not historically accurate. And at the end of that, we burn an effigy of President Lincoln. What? This is exciting stuff, Tom. Now, I'm not saying that we are obligated to be historically is, accurate, but this is entertainment. I mean, it's it's it's. First of all, I think it, it's it's insanely inaccurate, and it's also it's also in very bad taste. It, it could be uh, not necessarily bad taste, Tom. But then we hang burning uh, burning one of uh, and then what, the United States do, presidents in now, effigy this, this, is not in bad taste, Governor. Now, look, I'm not one of the planners of the event, but then after that. We hang General Grant. See from, again, that's from, a, a, from that's... a huge gallows, a huge gallows. And that's, now, that's... now tell me, now tell me one thing, Tom. That's not tell me that's not fun stuff because it is, and this is what the people want to see. And the people, the people in Birmingham, didn't have the ability to see stuff like this before that. Mm -hmm. Well, Governor, I, I I find I find that shocking that that's actually. League mandated entertainment. Well, now what I well I commend the XFL for what they're doing. Now look, I'm not one of the planners of the event, but I certainly enjoy it, and everybody there certainly enjoys it. And to be quite honest with you, Tom, the football is better. There is no question in my mind that the football is better. Now, from everything I've read in the papers. They're trying to tell me that the football is worse. Well, it ain't. Well, it ain't. Well, Governor, I uh, I don't know. I guess it's a, we can agree to disagree on that. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I just personally, I'm shocked by the fact that you, in any way, would make a reference to the to anything having to do with uh, somebody being Jewish or non-Jewish as as uh, some sort of anti XFL well, interest. Not Tom. Now, Tom, let's put it in perspective. Let's talk about who runs this country. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about why the NFL is on television and the XFL is being forced off television. Why is now, hopefully that will not happen. Now, now, Governor, can I ask if you would you be willing to take a phone call? I certainly would. Well, why don't we I do I don't have a lot of time, Tom. Okay, uh, WFMU, you're on the air. Hello? Hello. Yeah, I want to know if the governor has had a chance to party with any of those Bankalicious Bolt cheerleaders. What, what, now, what was that? He asked if you had a chance to party with any of the cheerleaders. Uh, 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 I, I wish. I wish. Uh, no, I don't. Now, you know, I have been, sir, that's a good question, and I respect that question. 
But uh, and I do not participate in that. And, uh, you know, hopefully that type of stuff does not necessarily go on. But what, what it is, it, it is a feel-good situation, and everybody's out to have a good time. And I, I'll tell you something, Tom. A lot of people have been talking up this thing. If I, if I can't get off the subject of that call, a lot of people have been talking that the XFL promotes smut. Mm-hmm. Well, now, does not the NFL promote smut? I mean, do we not see cheerleaders? Not, we do see cheerleaders. We do see cheerleaders. They now, don't. I mean, it, it, it's you don't get the cheap double entendre that you get with the XFL. It's though. simply a matter of perspective. Uh huh. And and how you watch the game. Now now now, I, I, I do not carry on in that regard. I'm a happily married man. Okay. Well. But I'll tell you something. There is nothing wrong with 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 with, with host, what I consider wholesome entertainment. Okay. Well, you know, that's I guess everybody has their own definition of what wholesome is. Right, but I certainly, I certainly do do not feel that a governor sleeping with a cheerleader is, is wholesome. I, I would agree with unless that. It's, unless it, it is, of course, mutually consented. Well, unless the governor is married, or or, or if the governor is married. Yes. So, okay. how long have you been governor? Just on a personal note, um, uh, Governor Swales. How long have I been Buddy Swales, governor of Alabama? Yes. Well, now it's been now. Well, it's about four months now. Since you've been governor, so you got elected on this past uh, this past election. Well, it's been about four months since I've been Buddy Swales, governor of Alabama. Since you got elected in this past the uh, the past election went in November. Well, well, there wasn't an actual election in November, Tom. I was appointed governor. Uh, governors are. Governors how how are, are you appointed governor without being elected? Well, I, I was. Yeah, I was a non-elected governor. Okay. I was appointed governor of Alabama. Butter Swales. By. By Butter who? Swales. Who were you Butter appointed? Butter Tom. Yes. Governor of Alabama. Was appointed, appointed by. Appointed by the XFL. Well, wow, hold on a minute. Appointed by the XFL? That's correct, Tom. How is it that he, as a, I mean, the XFL was just a business. Well, the XFL is a football league. But you're the governor of Alabama. Well, I am Butter Swales, governor of Alabama. That's my name. Are you the, are you the governor of Alabama? Well, there is an actual governor of Alabama, Tom. And his name is what? I think it's Don Siegelman. So, so wait a minute. You're actually not... Well, there's an actual elected governor of Alabama. His name's Don Siegel. So well, how are you the governor of Alabama? Well, I'm Butter Swales, comma, governor of Alabama. Which means what? Well, which means that I am... That's my name. What is it, a, a nickname? No, well, it's a moniker. A moniker? Oh, so that... But I'm not clear on what that is. Well, what, 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 what do you think it is, Tom? I thought it meant that you were the elected governor. I mean, that was the, the, the grounds on which I... Well, I could not get elected governor. I could not get, get elected governor of the state of Alabama. What, are you crazy? <laughs> I thought I was having the governor on. Well, if you had a, the actual governor of Alabama, Tom, you'd have Don Siegelman on your, your, your show right now. I'm Buddy Swales, and what governor does, of Alabama. And what does that mean? Well, that means that's my name. That's like if my name was Party Machine. Tom Sharpling, uh, governor of partying. I suppose. So it's just a nickname. It's not a nickname, Tom. It's the name that was chosen for me by the XFL. So you work for the XFL? I'm an employee of the league, yeah. And, and wh- I work for Vince McMahon. I, I'm just shocked. What? Now, what's, what's so shocking about that, Tom? Because you... you why would you have a nickname that is so specific that implies that you have earned a certain title? Well, Tom, the XFL is out to entertain people as well as it's out to promote great football. So how are you entertaining people? Well, I go down to Birmingham and I do shows. I do a radio show. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm a, a guest on some local television programs. And I promote the both. So, so you're just like a stunt. Well, I'm not a stunt, Tom. I'm a professional. A professional. 
I uh, hype up the Bolts. Okay. All right. So I, Who, I, by the way, Tom, are the best team in the XFL. All right, well, that's neither here nor there. Now, no, granted, they're not number one, but they will be. Now, I just have to, apolog- I have to apologize to they my audience. They will be under okay. Coach Jerry Donato, who's doing an amazing job. Okay, well... Who was burning up the field. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you something else, Tom. What? Casey Weldon, who was the Bolts QB, is the next Johnny U. See, but if you're on the payroll, everything that you just argued... Have you seen this man play, Tom? Yes, I, yeah, have I have. Have you seen Casey Weldon throw a ball? Yes. Now, that is like a lightning bolt. Well, you know what? <laughs> you are like a, a uh, paid stooge. For the XFL, so I really can't no, put a I whole lot. I, no, I buddy, that, buddy, Tom. I've got to, I've got to end this interview. No, what I'm doing, Tom, is promoting the XFL and the Birmingham Bulls. That's my job. Okay, well, I, my job is to do a radio show here, uh, Mr. Swales. Well, so I appreciate that. I have to move now, on. The least you can do, Tom, uh-huh. is to give some some respect to a fellow entertainer. Now, what I hope you're not doing is trying to purvey mistruths. On your show. Oh, God forbid I put a mistruth across, well, gov- well, Governor. Well, well, from what I hear, Tom, you are. Well, I, I now, have... You're, you're, in, you're in cahoots with this whole liberal media establishment who's trying to, to, trying to destroy this league. Look, I... I what I'm saying... Buddy? Is Vince buddy? McMahon and the XFL are doing great things. And okay, they great. they are doing great things for great. Alabama, well, and therefore they are doing great things from the, for, for, the, for the United States of America. Well, um, I thank you for... Uh, for now, you come down and you see a game, Tom, and then you tell me that this ain't real football. I, I, will, I might take you up on that. And well, you, you come down and see, a sh- right. see the pre-show, you see the halftime show, where we hang General Grant. And I'll tell you something right now, Tom. That's one of the most exciting things you'd ever see with your okay. own eyes. Well, I appreciate you being a guest on the program, and I apologize now, to the audience. Seen, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen a hanging? I'm saying I have, have never you ever seen, seen a lynch. Okay, on that note, have you seen a I, I'm hanging up on the.